All right, number four, I'm kind of cheating. Since he gets to cheat, I'm going to cheat a little bit too. I'm actually going to be putting two albums together, and there's a reason for it. This group I hadn't even heard of until I checked out albumoftheyear.org, which is an awesome way of just checking out all of what people have been listening to. This group is called Salt, and they put out two albums. Both are called titled, but one is Black Is and Rise. This is a... How would I say it? It's it has tinges of electronic, it has tinges of R&B, it has tinges of like blues and stuff like that. And just like with Spanish Love Songs, which was an album that needed to be heard in 2020, same thing with both Black Is and Rise. These are albums created strictly by all African American and Black artists, talking about, of course, the plight that has been going on throughout America and England and everything like that. And it's two hours, I think about 25 different tracks. To me, Black Is is the yin to Rise's yang, where Black Is is a little bit more in your face, a little bit more brutal of what's going on, a little bit more somber. And then Black Is is showing the hope of what things can be, a little bit more dance-centric, and just the combination of those two, some of the more poignant albums when it comes to this stuff. You know, it is 25 tracks, so that's why it's a little bit lower on the list. There are some songs that just don't work, but the interludes are all very poignant, especially one that is called It Ain't, which is literally t calling out fake white supporters of black people who are saying like, you think you know this stuff, but you don't. And and it's just very tongue in cheek and funny. There's there's moments of brevity, there's moments of somberness, but all together it encapsulates what's been going on with a lot of African American people over the last couple of years. Very interesting. So it's a very poignant album. It's a very much of the times album that yes. kind of gives a voice to the, all the suffering. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, it's not my typical genre, but I do enjoy heavy subject matter like that. So it's definitely something I think I'll check out. Don't want to get around to it, but uh, you will definitely let him know what I right. think of it. What, well, the one last thing I will say is it also spells it out very well. It's not like very complex in terms of the, the terminology. It's just like in your face of like, this is what's going on. That's the best way of approaching it. It's like, you haven't been listening. Now you need to listen. Interesting. So my number four is actually the second of the two EPs that I have on my top 10. And this is a band that I have spoken to him about in the past, but it's definitely very much out of his wheelhouse in terms of style. This is straight tech death. This is like brutal as as brutal and in your face and fast as metal gets. And this is one of my personal favorite bands in the genre. It's in Fairy. And it's their EP of Sunless Realms. Now, I discovered this band back in 2018 with the album Revenant. And the one thing that really drew me to this band was not only the guitar work, it wasn't wanky for the sake of being wanky, it fit the, the music, it was also the subject matter. They took 2018's Revenant and wrote nine songs, each about Dante's Inferno. Each single song talked about each level of hell in the actual Dante's Inferno story, which I thought was a really awesome and interesting way to write an album and a really awesome subject matter. And last year, they had The End of an Era, which was... More the same, just a little more technical, better cleans, his growls had improved. But this year's EP just, from start to finish, it's 22 minutes, and man, there is no break. It is balls to the wall, in your face, here I am, I'm going to slap you over the head with my riff after riff after riff, and we're not going to give you a chance to breathe. It's going to be 22 minutes, it's going to be short, it's going to be quick, but damn, you're going to remember it because it's going to hit heavy songs like the abhorrent act which is an awesome opener just starts off with this really awesome kind of airy guitar lead in and then all of a sudden everything hits you right at once like there is just it just from point a bam i'm gonna and then take off you got spellbound unearth you got the summoning which is an awesome track my personal favorite is, is aeon's torn just unrelenting six minutes of just soaring guitar leads soaring drum patterns just really is some of the most guttural death metal vocals you'll hear. I'm running out of words to this rap, this EP. It really blew me away and how much music they fit in in 22 minutes. Like he said, it's not necessarily my cup of tea, it's, but if it's if it's 22 minutes, I think I can make it work out. It's not for someone who has doesn't have a lot of experience in this type of genre, because like I said, it's not going to give you any time to breathe. It's going to do its job. It's going to get in. It's going to get out. But you're going to remember because it is a sledgehammer of an EP. I mean, I got the time. I'll check it out. So we're at the top three. 
And I think you know two of mine. I, I think I do. I, I have the, an idea. And then the one is actually going to be the rap album that you... you he don't. probably knows two of my top three. Okay. He has a guess. So, probably. number three. Can I take a guess? Yes. Is it is it Hankin? You are correct. So, it's it's unfortunate because every time that I've talked about them in terms of these end of the year lists, they never reach number one, even though they are one of my favorite bands. If I talked about The Mountain when it came out, I probably would have, it definitely would have been in my top ten, probably top five. Probably would have made your number one. I would have to go back to what that year was in terms of stuff, but it may, it sticks out. We have differing opinions on, up to a certain point with Hagen, we have similar opinions, but the last couple records we definitely differ on. Right. But... I agree with you with this. Virus is much better than Vector. One big thing is they didn't give out all the secrets before the album came out. Yes, they, they put out a couple of the songs. They put out Prosthetic, they put out Invasion, they put out Canary Yellow, but they left the, some of the better tracks for the end. Messiah Complex is a super cool suite that they do that ties into a Cockroach King from the Mountain. I debate on whether that is supposed to be like a good thing, but like I enjoy the ride that that is. And also it has some, some sounds of vision as well in their third part of that. But also I really, really enjoy Carousel. I really, I think it's one of their better songs that they've done in a very long time in terms of like a long form song like that. And The Strain, even though it's not my favorite, is still a nice compliment getting you into Canary Yellow. And, I mean, what can I say about the singles? Invasion is a super awesome song, in my opinion. Canary Yellow harkens back to some of their stuff they had done recently. More on the mountainside. And I, I think it's a beautiful ballad. And Prosthetic, as much as I hated at the beginning, it has grown on me. And I, and I like how it implements itself into the rest of the album. Like, when you hear the do-do that part comes back in on the rest of the suite. There are rumors that this might be Haken's last album for quite some time. And if that is the case, I think it ties a lot of things together very well. Does it hit the highs of Mountain or Affinity? No, but I still think it's a damn good progressive album. I, I will give this, it is a vast step up over Vector. As you know, I don't know if it's still on the channel, I <laughs> have a very, very scathing review of Vector. We will link that. Yeah, um, that was kind of the point where I kind of lost faith in this band, but Virus is much better record, and it definitely is a step in the right direction. As much as I would love them to go back to the Mountain and Infinity era, I don't think that's where this band wants to be anymore. It's the last thing they've done. They've definitely put their, their best foot forward, and I will be checking out what is going to come when it, whenever they release something new. Right, and trust me when I said this, I had to pull teeth in order for him to listen to some of these songs. I'm, I'm sitting in the car with him being like, you have to listen to Carousel. I had lost so much <laughs> momentum and respect for this band after Vector because it was my biggest disappointment of the year when it came out. Mm -hmm. My number three is a band that, in a genre that is my wheelhouse, it's progressive death metal. And it's a band I think I told him about in the past, but I don't know if he's ever got into it. The band is Black Crown Initiate. And with their album, Violent Portraits of Doomed Escape. It's not an album that you can listen to once and discover all its secrets. It's something that you need to put time into. And you have to really be in the zone when you listen to this album. Because they do a lot of different things on this album. Again, it is progressive metal. But like I said, there is a lot of death metal influence in it. Songs like The Invitation have these really awesome clean vocal buildup. And then it just jumps into that really heavy death metal and then they have this really awesome guitar solo that goes on for about 45 seconds where you're just like wow and you, that's where you get that progressive influence and that's just the lead track like songs like son of war and trauma bonds are really awesome trauma bonds is a unique track it's not a lot of harsh vocals and this band's known for its harsh vocals it's kind of like almost sing songy in the chorus which is really was what kind of took me off guard it's like, oh, that's a unique take for this band. But my favorite track on the album is Years and Frigid Light. It encompasses what this album does best into one song, and it's that brutality and that beauty all in one song and how they can play off each other. This band is a big-time riser in the progressive death metal scene. Their clean vocalist actually just a couple years ago did a, a guest spot with Rivers of Nile, and everyone loved that album. So, you know, this band definitely has it. It's only their third album, and they're going to be around for a long time. Them and kind of like Neil Blobus are going to kind of carry this progressive death metal scene for a long time going forward. And this is an album that they're going to have a hard time topping because it was, for, in my eyes, it was really, 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 really good. 
All right. I mean, uh, you've told me about them. I, I have yet to check them out, but like, I know how big you are on that band and the Oblivious Garbus. You've given me a lot of recommendations that have not gone wrong. So I definitely have to check this out. But yes, I do know your top two. Yes, you do know my top two. <laughs> and um, to be fair, right now, I'm still debating if I'm going to switch them. All right. I don't know yet. When, I, when it's my turn, I will make that decision. All right.